cutting boards with CNC's. So this video is all about making some beautiful cutting boards and specifically some juice groove styles uh, that make great uh, for barbecue, uh, meats, all that kind of stuff, uh, but making it with a CNC. And so lots of possibilities. In this video, I will show you some uh, you know, traditional cutting board stuff, some about the wood selection, all of those process, finish, all that good stuff. But mostly it's about these tool paths and making these cool shapes, right? We got some fluting here and, you know, angling down the wells, all that good stuff. So feel free to use the timestamps to skip around to what you're looking for or watch the whole video. I will have some software tutorials for V-Carve uh, so you can actually see how, how I went about it. But lots of ideas, lots of inspiration here. Uh, but check it out, cutting boards with the CNC. This video is brought to you by Imagination to Reality, I2R. All right, so obviously we're making cutting boards, so you're gonna do a glue up, you're gonna use some great hardwoods. I'm not gonna go into all the steps for just getting to your cutting board blank. Uh, primarily, this is the CNC portion, so I'm just showing some of the basic steps. You could certainly flatten your board on a CNC, but for more on my cutting board process and glue ups and wood selection and all that, check out Cutting Board 101. Tap that card or link down below. But once you get your boards all glued up, once they're flat, again, you could flatten them on the CNC, uh, you're gonna wanna square them off, right? So uh, one tool, you could just use the miter gauge backwards and that works great. You could use a cross cut sled, uh, but getting them squared off, getting nice rectangles is gonna make things a lot easier for when you are uh, putting it on the table for CNC work, uh, but plenty of options for that. All right, and here they are. So I got quite a few different varieties, lots of different species, uh, but now it's time to clamp my boards down. So uh, there's plenty of options for clamping your boards. Uh, I just made some quick DIY options here. Uh, these just run along the T-slots uh, on my CNC. Uh, there's ones that go in the front and the side. Uh, whatever you do, you just have to make sure your board is secure. That is the most important thing with juice grooves. Uh, you're gonna have a, a, a big issue if it's not super secure. And so this is just one quick little solution I came up with, just some you know, cheap little hardware, hardware and um, some scrap plywood. But, you know, basic idea here, obviously you're going to use, you know, a square to make sure your board is centered and, and, and whatnot. This just gives you an idea if you want to make a quick solution that'll take you about 15 minutes uh, and just some basic hardware. And so that worked well. I still use my other hold down clamps, but uh, make sure you have a good solution. Double stick tape, I don't think is enough. So here we go, right? So just a pretty straightforward juice groove. It's just a quick rectangle. I can see how it is locked down. Uh, this is just a, a quick, quick and dirty, nice and clean, uh, but you gotta make sure that your board is held down nice and secure. So here you can see, I do have the four hold down clamps. I do have, you know, those kind of spacers to, to lock it in place uh, in the front and back. And it really pr produced some great results this way. And so I was able to do quite a few juice grooves. So starting off, just a simple juice groove, just a simple rectangle uh, and some options in V-Carve. All right, so just a quick little V-Carve tutorial. Uh, if you don't need the tutorial, just skip on ahead, use those timestamps down below. Uh, so here I am in V-Carve. Uh, I've set my job for 18 inches long, uh, the board, uh, 12 inches wide, about an inch and a quarter uh, thickness. That's my ideal you know, measurement. Most of my boards end up being you know, 17.3825 and, and so forth. So if you wanna go for a standard measurement, you can certainly do that. Uh, but I got my dimensions in. It is important to be aware of your width and height. Uh, for this, it just makes things so much easier. So I've got it set and I'm gonna go ahead and draw a rectangle. So I just go to draw a rectangle. Um, I'm gonna do a square corner. Um, if I have an 18 inch board, I'm gonna go with a 16 inch long rectangle or wide and a 10 inch high. And I'm just gonna click create. So whatever my measurements are, I'm gonna subtract two inches. So because my board is 18 inches wide, uh, this gave me 16 inches. And just that two inch uh, subtraction really makes a perfect, uh, a perfect margin in my opinion that accounts for uh, round overs and chamfers. It gives you enough clearance because I'm gonna be using a round nose bit and that's gonna cut right along this line. And it's gonna come out about 
three eighths of an inch here and three eighths of an inch on the other side, so three quarters of an inch, and that's just gonna give that, that perfect amount of clearance. You can, of course, play around with this, but that's what I use, it works great. Um, so you could do a square rectangle, you could do a rounded rectangle, you, of course, could also do an internal. So there's some just really simple options here, just a click of a button, uh, you've got it, but we're gonna just go with this square corner. I'm gonna click on my vector, go to my tool paths, and I'm gonna use a profile toolpath. So clicking on the profile toolpath, uh, the bit I'm gonna use is a round nose bit. So uh, all of the bits, all of the, the tools that I'm using in this video are down in the description of this video. But here you can see, I just pulled this right off of Whiteside's website. Uh, same thing for you know other tools. You know Amana does this as well, but you can find uh, their specifications. So I just click on it, it has all of their recommendations. I'm just gonna go with what they recommend. I'm not gonna mess around with anything else. And, um, and then I'm, I'm, I'm pretty close to going, right? I wanna click on, I wanna click, click, uh, cut on the line, but this is crazy important. Now the bit can handle a depth, uh, I'm doing about a quarter inch. That's usually how I go, how deep I go on my juice grooves. A deeper juice groove is, is great. You really, you know, as far as the function of the board, but quarter of an inch I think is sufficient. Uh, but one pass, that is a lot of material, especially in hardwoods, and that's pretty aggressive. And even if you have a great clamping setup, that might be just too much to handle. So I do like to just slow it down. It goes so quick anyway, and I just like to do four passes, um, you know, two, three, four passes, and that's just gonna slow it down and uh, make sure that my board doesn't jump, especially as it's cutting along this side. Uh, it's going through all that end grain. This is where it really does like to jump a bit. Uh, and so you wanna make sure you're, you're clamped down, but uh, that's it. That's really all you have to do. And then you click calculate, uh, preview, take a look, and uh, there you go, right? So you got your tool path, uh, you got your clearance, you got your measurements. Pretty basic how to run a juice groove uh, just with a rectangle. Of course, you could also uh, do those, uh, you know, you could do an internal one like so. Uh, I've done it, I did a couple boards like that. So some options, really basic, just using the rectangle tool uh, to get you started with juice grooves. It is fun to have your kids involved and you know let them push some of the buttons, help them work with the design. So highly recommend that, whether it's your kids, grandkids, or whatnot. But here's that same one that I just showed you in V-Carve where it's that simple rectangle, uh, but doing kind of that inset, uh, you know, rounded corner. So just a little different look. So again, once you've programmed it in V-Carve, it's, it's so quick. It runs so quickly. Uh, this just gives you never another idea of a unique juice groove that would be harder to do uh, without a CNC. Um, so for any of my boards, I always find the center. I square it off with a carpenter square, making sure it is right dead center. Uh, however you set up your machine, just make sure it's it's square. And then locking it down with those clamps, making sure it's super, super duper secure. Uh, on this one, I'm going to show you how to create a well. Uh, so just adding in a triangle well at the end here. Uh, there's plenty of options for this, but I want to explore uh, looking at adding a well for the juice uh, in this barbecue board, uh, as well as some other options. But while we're here, I just want to show how you see uh, there's that line, that dark walnut, and oh, it's not even, right? So even though I said to be secure, it wasn't perfectly even. Uh, so one way around that, if that happens, uh, obviously you don't want that to happen, but if you have a glue up like I did, uh, it is a little unsightly. You just go back into V-Carve and then you can just take that rectangle and just bump it up. Bump it over uh, just uh, you know a little bit, a fraction of a bit, and then just rerun it, uh, the same setting. So here I am, I'm gonna rerun it and it's only gonna cut uh, on that side uh, that wasn't even. So it's gonna end up making it a little bit wider of a juice groove. Uh, however, those lines are gonna match. So here I got a little of that white oak on the side hanging out and a little of that white oak. So it's even, uh, it is a little bit wider of a juice groove, but uh, as far as the lines with this type of glue up with these different species, it just looks better. So that's a quick little fix uh, if you run into that issue. But back to the well, adding in a triangle. So you of course would start with your, your standard rectangle or whatever you have, but then you wanna add in a, you know, a well at the bottom. It doesn't have to be a triangle, that's just what I did here. And uh, using a ball nose bit, I'll, I'll talk all about this in the V-Carve tutorial as well as some other options. Uh, so I started messing around with fluting 
And so this just kind of tapers it down, it angles down uh, the groove lower. And so I ended up making the well uh, deeper. Instead of a quarter inch deep, it was you know nearly half an inch deep. Uh, but I, I didn't want that sharp drop off, so a gradual slope. Uh, and so just kind of messing around. I did a lot of trial and error. Uh, this is something if you're not feeling comfortable, I would recommend doing it on a scrap piece uh, or doing you know some test work first, but just really, really small bites, just taking away a little bit at a time, uh, just being extra careful here. It worked out perfectly for, for this board and uh, gave some great results. All right, so we have another V-Carve tutorial for you. This one is gonna be talking about how to add a well. Uh, this one's a little bit longer because I wanna talk about uh, fluting, some other things. Again, if you don't need this, use those timestamps to skip ahead. But we have our 18 inch wide board, our 12 inch high, blah, blah, blah. We did that before. Uh, rectangle, we talked about that, we subtracted. Just wanna get us back to where we were before to show. And so what we're working from. So with this well idea, you wanna still have your standard use groove. And we're still going to have our tool path. We're not going to have one pass. That's just too aggressive in my opinion. I don't wanna lose my beautiful hardwood board. And there we go. All right, so I have my, my, my groove, All right? I got my groove, it's lovely. Now I wanna add a triangle. So I'm, I'm gonna use a triangle down here in the corner. You can use other shapes. You're just making a pocket. It's essentially just a pocket. Uh, using the grid lines on is really helpful to uh, do your dimensions. Plenty of ways to do this. This is just the easiest way I found. And I'm gonna make my triangle just a little bit bigger, a little bit bigger than my uh, box, uh, than my line itself. So I used that grid line. I went up, let's see, I went up one, two, three, four. So I wanna come over one, two, three, Four. And there we go. So I got my triangle. It's just a little bit longer. Uh, remember that the tool I used here was three quarters of an inch. And so it came out uh, three eighths this way, three eighths this way. So having my pocket, uh, again, I'm going to be cutting within, it should be fine. Again, you can just kind of mess around with this, kind of some guess and check. Then I'm going to go to my tool path and I'm going to do my pocket. And so I could use the same bit. Uh, you could use a ball nose bit, other bits. I'm just gonna use that same round nose bit I used for the groove. And uh, cut depth uh, for my well, I could keep it just at 25 uh, hundredths of an inch, the same uh, depth. And uh, again, I wanna edit those passes. I do not want to have it too aggressive uh, to remove it all. It's such a small area. And uh, let's just see what this looks like. So I'll preview it. All right, so that looks pretty good. Looks pretty good right there, it carved it all out. Now one thing I will say is when it carves out, uh, you might have some ridges. So if I go ahead, I'll go ahead and click edit this tool path. Let's take a closer look at that tool. So I actually went ahead and I changed the cutting parameters to be 16% step over. Uh, it's normally at 38%. That's just the automatic one that Whiteside does. And so normally what I would do is I would just uh, do the, the standard, the standard, let's remove that. Uh, and maybe instead of the full depth, I would cut it at 23 hundredths of an inch with the standard uh, where there's gonna be some ridges. And then I would do one more cleanup pass uh, later uh, just for those last two hundredths of an inch to get it nice. It's such a small area. Uh, there's some great sanding attachments that I'll talk about later in the video that would really help with that. But it's that simple to get a well. Done. You're done. Uh, you've created a pocket. Save it. Good to go. So you can stop right here. Uh, jump on ahead uh, to the, the next uh, part of the video if you want to. But I want to talk about how I did that fluting. Uh, so how I got it to angle down. And so what I did for that was I made my well a little bit deeper. So instead of, you know, 25 hundredths of an inch, I went 45 hundredths of an inch. So almost, almost half an inch. An inch. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and do my number of passes. Let's just say that's four again. Uh, so it's going to be much deeper. You can see how it's so much deeper, but there's those ridges I was talking about that can happen if that step over uh, is where it's at. And so doing a finishing pass is helpful. So let's just call this, uh, it's, it's always helpful to name these. So deep well, uh, we'll call it 0.45. And then let's say I'm going to finish it up. I don't want to have those marks. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll call my final depth 
48 hundredths of an inch. But on this time, I want to change that to, let's say, 16%. Uh, there's, there's plenty of videos online that talk about the step over, uh, but I want to go ahead and make sure I have the right one. It's only going to be about, what, 3 hundredths of an inch, so I'm okay with one pass here uh, because it's so small. And now, see how it cleaned it up? So it shows some lines, but if you feel that with your finger, you can hardly feel that. But that's it's actually really, really smooth. Uh, but now I have this kind of abrupt edge right here, and it doesn't you know, gradually guide on in. So I wanna talk a little bit about fluting. Uh, so, so I can rename that so I don't forget. Uh, deep well 0.48. Uh, it's just helpful to keep track of everything. Okay, so let's go back to 2D view. I'm gonna add a line. And on this one, I wanna have it start kind of right in the middle. Now, I wanna be right on the line because I'm using that tool I used before, that, or that same bit on that juice groove. And I just wanna come right here uh, and let's gradually go in there. So now I have a line. Can you see how that line kind of comes right in here? And now I'm gonna go to my tool path and I wanna do the fluting tool path. So it's gonna start at zero and it's gonna go all the way down to 0.48 because that's my final depth of my well. I'm using that same bit. Again, it's just that same bit all throughout. And this has already been carved out at 25 hundredths of an inch. Um, so maybe maybe I wanna you know, go a little bit more gradual, but let's see what happens here. And so here, it's just gonna go down here and it just kind of cleaned up uh, where it was a little, it's hard to see in the 3D. I mean, you can kind of see it here. Um, but I really recommend testing this out. As you saw in my video, I kind of kept trying it. I just kind of worked my way up, worked my way up. So this would be a good candidate to test. But here, by starting it here and it gradually went down, uh, it worked so perfectly. And then I could do the same thing uh, as I did right here. I have a line there. Now I create a line just right here in the middle or however much I want to go. And just to the edge, I don't need to go too deep. And that same idea, I'm going to create yet another vector. Or I'm going to click on that vector, go to the tool path, and I want to do a fluting. This will be my second fluting. Again, my final depth of my well is 48 hundredths of an inch. So let's calculate, and it's not, it's not going to remove that much material. So here you can see it just kind of cleaned it up a little bit. So this just really helps uh, guide in those transitions. So there are so many options here. Uh, you could do a uh, full fluting all the way down. Uh, be sure to check out, there's a video, go ahead and click on this card. Uh, up here. Uh, Vetric has a great video on fluting and just different ideas for juice grooves. So you can check that out for more. That's how I learned how to do this. Uh, some other great resources, but uh, a fun option here. All right, next up, some more juice grooves, some different styles, but let's look at that well one more time. And here you can see that completed well uh, with uh, fluting, right? So it's sloping down nice and gradually on both sides into that deeper well. Uh, it's actually really smooth uh, there because we uh, changed the step over rate, but uh, there you have it. So adding the well with some fluting. All right, another style here. Uh, yes, this is just plywood. Uh, anytime I try a new bit or a new style, I do like to test it out. So this is just some scrap plywood and I'm just using a bowl and tray bit here uh, just to kind of test out a round dish with kind of an inset. Uh, an inset juice groove, so, uh, and then, you know, an out outside profile. So pretty simple, but quick V-carve tutorial on this one. Another V-carve tutorial here. Uh, so on this project, we're just gonna say it's a 14 inch by 14 inch square. Uh, it's a little bit wider than a planer. You could, of course, if you have a piece that's wider than what your planer could handle, you could actually surface it on your uh, the bed of your machine itself. Uh, so this is a great way to plane uh, on the CNC, fully CNC cutting board. Uh, for me, I just use my drum sander, uh, but you could uh, just machine it and uh, just like you're doing a spoil board, uh, cleaning off your, your bed, you could do the same thing to, to surface. There's a couple great videos online of how to surface your wood there, but I'm just gonna say it's a 14 inch by 14 inch square, uh, one inch, and uh, there we go. So I got my piece, and on this one, I'm gonna add a circle, all right? So I'm just gonna go ahead and add my circle so easy like that. Um, 
you know, I want to maximize the wood, but I don't want to go too close to the edge. So there I have my outer, my outer circle. Um, so for this, that's about how big I want my board itself to be. Um, before I forget, I want to make sure that I know this is my profile toolpath. So on this one, I want to use a standard end mill. I'm just going to go ahead and use a quarter inch end mill. And this one, if my board is one inch thick, I want to cut through one inch. Uh, uh, the end mills I'm using my machine, it can handle going a little bit more aggressive. So I'm going to use, actually I used a compression bit from Bits and Bits. Um, so it could handle, it could easily handle that, but we're going to, we're going to go not too aggressive. Let's, let's just, let's not get crazy. Let's not get crazy. We'll call it eight, eight passes here, uh, for this. And I am going to add tabs, even though it's round. So one thing when you have a rounded piece like this, right? Eh, maybe, maybe the tabs will hold, maybe they won't. You want to have that great clamp down uh, on this one. Maybe having that double stick tape would be a great idea as well. Uh, but uh, I do recommend uh, cutting your groove before you cu cut the profile. But because I have the profile here, uh, we'll go ahead and do it. I want to cut outside, outside the line. So this is just a pretty, pretty straightforward. All right. There, I have my piece. So that's what my board eventual shape uh, is gonna be. Uh, however, the groove. So the groove is very similar to everything else we've, uh, we've been doing. I'm gonna draw, uh, what do I have here? I'm gonna come on out and give myself, you know, I don't know, that's pretty good. I wanna verify, did it get centered? Yeah, more centered. Always good to check. Uh, you could, let's see if I can find it. No, I can't. See, there's so many, there's so many great options in here. Sometimes I can't remember where all the, all the things are. This makes for really compelling content. There we go, measure. Uh, it's helpful to just know how big is that gonna be. So, it uh, looks like that's about five. Okay, so five tenths of an inch, so half an inch. That's a half inch ridge, that's good. I'm, I'm comfortable with that just to kind of know that's going to be the ridge of my bowl. All right, now I have, I want to cut out all this interior uh, just to kind of have that recessed uh, surface down below. So this is essentially just a big pocket. And so it's kind of like a tray, uh, doing a bowl in a tray. So I'm going to do a pocket toolpath. I'm going to use that white side router bit. I don't need to go too deep on this one. I'm going to do the same thing I did earlier with the well uh, video, uh, with the well, the well tutorial. I'm going to go 23 hundredths of an inch, and um, I'm going to go ahead and select it. Again, I talked about this before with the step over. Uh, I'm going to do the, what the manufacturer you know, settings had it. It had a 38% step over, and uh, passes. That's pretty aggressive. That's just too aggressive. It's going to take a while but I, I don't want to take all of that at the same time. So um, here, I guess I could pin it. I know some of you are probably annoying. Dude, just pin it. All right, so I have uh, 23 hundredths of an inch depth. I'm going to do two passes just because, no, yeah, I'm going to do it just to be safer. Uh, model, again, you, you just test it out for your machine. So here it's going to remove it all. Uh, but you can see there's all these little ridges uh, that are going to pop up. And so these ridges are not going to be smooth. And so to clean that up, and that's pocket one, to clean it up, I'm going to do a second pocket. And this one is going to be the full cut depth of 25 hundredths of an inch. But this step over, again, ugh, there's so many great videos online that talk about this. 20%, there's different rules for it. I just kind of messed around and this just worked for me. Um, and again, it's just going to be that two hundredths of an inch. So one pass is perfectly fine. It's also going to be moving very slow. And so let's see what happens there. So it's so much smoother. And actually, if you felt that you wouldn't feel the ridges at all, you are going to need to sand it out. But if you want to eliminate the ridges and make it perfectly smooth, that's the way to do it. Um, and so, uh, you know, that tool path is going to be, that's going to be about 10 minutes. The other one only nine minutes, so not not too long at all. Uh, pretty pretty straightforward, and that's how you make the circle tray with that recessed. Uh, it's just a, a glorified dish, big juice groove.
Now for the actual carving and the beautiful hardwoods. Uh, this is pretty mesmerizing uh, just as it goes around, kind of hypnotic. And so it, it makes quick work uh, with it. Uh, lots of beautiful chips here. Obviously you could use dust collection, but uh, you can see right here, now it's getting super smooth. That's because I changed that step over percentage uh, for that final pass and it just made it so much smoother. Uh, switched out just to an end mill, cutting the profile uh, just to get that dish out. And you can see uh, it's a just oversized platter. Uh, so this would work great for, you know, so many things, but you know, essentially a cutting board. Uh, different style here, okay, different style. This one uh, is utilizing clip art within V-Carve, uh, but it's just kind of a rounded rectangle. You always want to start with the groove first if you're going to cut out the profile uh, while it's still secure. So I've cut the groove and now I'm cutting out that profile. Uh, here's a quick tutorial. Okay, so one last V-Carb tutorial for you. Uh, a couple other designs, but this is the last V-Carb tutorial. Again, timestamps if necessary. Uh, but on this board, it's a little bit thinner, about one inch, about 11 by 17, whatever you, you know, your piece is, what looks good for you. This one's gonna utilize clip art. So I'm gonna go ahead and go under clip art to the 2D vectors. There's lots of really cool options. Uh, you could make, you know, uh, a plaque board. You could make a star board. This one's a really cool idea. I thought about doing, you know, a painting, uh, you know, charcuterie board or whatnot. But on this one, you just go ahead and pick a, a panel, a shape that looks good to you. Uh, this is the one I went with. And so you just drag it on over. And then we're gonna go ahead and make sure it is centered. It's centered. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger. I can stretch it out. All right, so I'm just gonna leave it. I'm not gonna reshape the size. I mean, I could stretch it, make it a little bit longer. That's certainly an option. You could do that. Um, all right, let's go ahead, let's roll with that. Let's see what happens. So uh, like with the circle one, I'm gonna need to cut a profile on this eventually. However, I want to also have my groove. So I just hit Control C. Control copy and then control V just to make a duplicate. I'm holding down the shift key to keep it centered. And then I'm gonna go in and shrink it a little bit more. Now the one thing that happens on these, if you uh, elongate it, uh, change the shape. So it's not a perfect, um, it's not perfect all the way around. If you're okay with that, continue on and you could just do everything like that. I, you know, I am who I am and it kind of bugs me. So I'm gonna go ahead and leave it at its original shape like this. So I'm gonna leave it at the original shape, control, control C, control V, I made a duplicate, I'm holding down the shift key and then I shrink it and you see how I have uniform borders. So I have a uniform space all the way around. I'm gonna go like that. And so uh, again, this is totally trial and error. Just test around, mess around with everything. Um, but I need to see uh, if this is gonna give me enough margins once I do that three quarter inch uh, profile toolpath. So I'm not doing um, the full, the outside. This is the juice groove. And so on this one, I'm gonna go back like I did so many times before. Uh, just gonna use this. It went ahead to uh, the earlier tutorial of the 16% step over. I don't need that for a profile. So we'll just go to the standard. And I'm gonna cut on the line. Again, I don't wanna go too aggressive, especially as it cuts uh, on the side here through the end grain, no matter what holding uh, method you have, that's just best practice. All right, so it's cutting on the line, going through. Let's see what this looks like. Calculate. All right, so that's that's how big it went. Now let's see what happens when I have this tool path for my outside. Might have to shrink it. I have a feeling it's gonna be a little bit too big. All right, we're selecting a different end mill for our profile to cut it out, cut it out to the shape I want. This is a one inch board, so it's gonna cut one inches. Um, I don't need to do 14 passes, but I think eight is good for me. That's that's good with my machine that works. I'm gonna cut outside the line. I'm gonna add my tabs and here we go. All right, tabs, tabs are added. Let's take a look. All right, so it cut outside. You know, this, this can work, this can work. So I'm gonna unpin just to take a look. 
All right, well, this is a little narrow here, uh, but for this board, that would work just great. And again, uh, what you can do, uh, just to test, again, you're gonna have, I can use that measuring tool, right? Some measure tool to just check your distances. But this is just a great one to mess around with. Uh, this is just a fun shape. Uh, there are some ideas like this on Etsy and other ones, but there's some really cool ones in here. You can make some really unique boards, uh, maybe not juice grooves per se, but you could make some really cool charcuterie boards that don't have the juice grooves. Uh, but a lot of options using just the built-in clip art uh, within VCarve, or of course you could, uh, like my other sign videos uh, where I explain how you can find clip art uh, online and other pictures and make that work. But there you have it. And there you have it, uh, beautiful board, right? So pretty clean, no rata work yet, uh, no roundovers or anything like that, but pretty clean board, fun design. All right, this one is my favorite. Uh, so much going on here. This kind of takes in uh, the standard rectangle, creating a well, and then that fluting I showed uh, with that uh, well, well video. Uh, it's really, really a great piece, and so lots going on here. So. First up, you want to test it out. So anytime, again, test out on scrap wood. So I have a, a scrap piece of two by four here. I did the, the rectangle uh, juice groove. I did a practice rectangle well, and now I'm doing a fluting pass right here just to kind of get a feel uh, for this, this new technique before I go into those beautiful, beautiful hardwoods. So this just kind of gives you a feel of this technique where there's gonna be little lines uh, where that juice groove of the meat can just kind of run on in. It's thin enough that it's not gonna, you know, interfere with normal use and whatnot. So uh, like always, you're gonna start with that rectangle uh, exterior groove, just your standard groove, and then you're gonna create a pocket. So this is a rectangle similar to what I did with the triangle earlier, uh, but I'm just making a big old rectangle uh, here, a nice well. It's, it's also a quarter of an inch, just like the rest of my groove. All right, now I'm switching over to a ball nose bit. Uh, this is a 1 16th, uh, or it's a 1 8th, one, one of the two. And so I'm just running lines down, but you see how it's barely taken any, any of the material away because I wanted to test it out. You see how I got uniform spacing? It's exactly what I wanted in between. A lot of measuring, a lot of measuring going on here. And so uh, as, as you go, test it out, shallow depth, and then go ahead and do the full depth. So this is fluting uh, from the, the surface down to a quarter of an inch. So like I showed earlier in that fluting video, same process. You gotta measure though. If you're gonna do lines like this and really test it out, lots of measurements, measure, 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 be precise. Uh, and so uh, measure, right? Uh, same thing again, my first pass is just gradual. I just wanna verify that I'm where I wanna be. I was, and it actually turned out perfectly. I got it right, uh, symmetrical, right in the middle of, of where I wanted, and then I did the full carve, and it's a quarter inch uh, down to the bottom and then on up. So that's actually a 1 8 inch uh, ball nose bit that I got there, but just mess around with those, play around with it, and uh, it's just a fun design, a little bit different. Okay, you're gonna do sanding, you're gonna do all the traditional you know, woodworking things for a cutting board. Uh, like I said, I do have that cutting board 101 video with all the steps, but I'm gonna include these ones here because I did try some different ones uh, with this batch of cutting boards that I wanna share with you, uh, so stay tuned. So, router profiles, right? This really changes the board a lot. You can do these uh, router profiles on the CNC. I just think it's easier to do it at a, a router table. So you can do a round over on the top and leave it blank on the, uh, you know, square on the bottom. You can do a slight round over here, a heavy round over. Uh, on this really deluxe board here, I just went with a really, really subtle round over. This is just a 1 8 inch and it's just, it's a really nice look. So play around with your router bits, what you want. Um, you could also do a chamfer, right? Just that 45 degree bevel, that's a great look too. So router profiles at a router table makes quick work of it. Also handholds. Handholds are nice, so you can use both sides of the board. Uh, this one is using a ball nose bit. I have a whole video just on cutting board handles. Uh, some really simple options. It's a short video, really short video. So type that card or link down below. Uh, here you can see this one. There are some burn marks. So I'll show you a, a trick for cleaning those up shortly. Uh, but that's one style. This one you could do on the CNC very easily, uh, but it's just, I had my setup all set. Uh, it's just using a cove bit. Uh, to get just a little inset handle there. Um, so fun, fun little addition, right? Elevates the board. 
And here you have it. So this is what the boards look like uh, after they got all their CNC work, all, they got all their unique juice grooves, they have roundovers, and uh, time to clean up some of those burn marks, uh, some of those things. So here we do have burn marks. If you're using the CNC, you're probably not gonna have much burn marks at all but using a card scraper like this is really handy. Uh, links to all the tools and accessories down below if necessary, but this uh, just helps uh, expedite the process. So you're able to clean up those burn marks uh, really quickly. Yeah, listen to that. So it also works on those juice grooves if you have burn marks uh, or if you had to do some reshaping because of some, some whoopsies. One tool that I absolutely love is this contour sander. Um, I have a whole video that just came out recently on different sander attachments that make projects you know, so much easier and quicker. So especially for CNC work, I love this tool. Uh, it really, there's nothing like it. It's just so flexible how it's able to sand the juice grooves. It can sand those wells. Uh, there's plenty of different options and grits. So check out that video with a lot of other sanding options like pneumatic sanders and all that. Um, but another video, yes, another video. You are gonna have to do some hand sanding. Uh, so hand sanding, uh, work your way through, just get it nice and smooth. As far as sanding, my progression is I do 80 grit, then 120, then 150, and then I raise the grain. Um, so here, I'm just cleaning up those little grooves that I did the fluting on, and uh, just sanding everything up to 150. Once you've sanded your board to 150, you wanna raise the grain. So this is just a spray bottle with water, and I'm misting the surface of the board. Uh, both sides, you wanna get water everywhere. You don't wanna soak it, so do dry off any excess moisture. What this does is it raises the fibers of the wood. And what you're doing is you're raising those fibers so then you can knock it down with a 220 grit. If you don't do this after the board gets washed, it'll, uh, it'll be rough to the touch. And so it just won't be you know, as great of a board. So here I am, the wood has dried, and now I'm sanding it at 220 grit. Uh, and then it's time for finish. So many finish options. Uh, my wood, uh, my cutting board 101 video, I talk about so many options, but this is a new one. It's using pure tongue oil, very important distinction, and a citrus solvent uh, at a one-to-one -one ratio. And so the Wood Whisperer just had a video on this, just talking about longevity and different things. So I thought I'd try it out. Uh, tap that card if you wanna see Mark's video uh, where he kind of explores this. And so um, I'm just going ahead and here you can see how it floods down those grooves. It's kind of satisfying to see these juice grooves in action. Uh, but I'm just flooding it with this one-to-one uh, -one mixture of the tongue oil and the citrus solvent. Really important. Uh, Mark's video kind of talks about all the different options there. But um, with this, you just uh, there's a lot of different ways to apply tongue oil. How I went about it is I did, I flooded it. I flooded all of these boards. And so I flooded it on the top with a juice groove, just let it pool. Uh, it absorbs it pretty quickly because it's thin with the solvent. You do wanna make sure you get both sides. Don't just do one side and just let it sit. So get both sides a little bit. At least it's uh, absorbed some of that tongue oil and everywhere. Uh, but then I just keep, you just keep applying. I just kept applying it uh, till it didn't absorb it. You know, for about 30 minutes or so, I just kept adding more and more. Um, you know, I used to dunk with the mineral oil and do all of that. Uh, the one thing with this tongue oil is it does take about 30 days to cure. So this is not going to eliminate your mineral oil bubbles and, you, you know, it's going to leak out. However, after that time, it dries. It fully dries and it produces Produces a much better it it polymerizes right so it even hardens itself uh, it just provides a much better finish that lasts way longer than a traditional mineral oil uh, so here you can see I did get the bottom as well just beautiful colors look at all those natural colors so if you want to learn more about the woods I used uh, I do have another video uh, wood 101 where to buy the wood where do I buy it all kinds of tips so uh, check that one out. But uh, here you can see there's a little dry spot here. So you do want to keep applying, um, but just note that, you know, some people will do, you know, two, three, four, five coats of, t of the tongue oil over and over again. Uh, for me, usually with mineral oil, you know, I, I kind of went about the same. I just kept flooding it, just got a enough so it would absorb. Uh, it was soaking wet, wasn't really doing much, and then I let it dry overnight. Next day, uh, it had absorbed most of it, and now I'm kind of rubbing it all in, I'm buffing it in. Some would then apply more tongue oil and do more coats, I thought it was sufficient. I'm using some 400 grit sandpaper and then 320 uh, pads with the Orbital. Uh, 
some people will also use these synthetic Scotch-Brite pads. Uh, basically what I like to do after oil, it's a little bit like a grain raise, and so I like to buff everything down again and sand it down. It just makes it even smoother. This is not necessary, but uh, sometimes there's some spots that you missed in sanding. It's still a little rough to the touch. It just elevates the board. So here I have that 320 grit. I'm going super light, super light. It's also buffing in some of that uh, tongue oil. I am adding wood wax. Now, there's one thing, I love this stuff, and I talk all about this in my Cutting Board 101 video. Walrus oil, I don't think there's anyone that makes a better wood wax than they do. I've made my own, their recipe is amazing. The one problem with wood wax and tongue oil is it slows down the curing process, right? And so it's perfectly fine to do together, and really the tongue oil on its own is probably going to provide a good waxy finish. I just love the sheen of walrus oil. So I was trying something new out. Uh, perfectly fine, works together, but just take that uh, into consideration that it might slow down uh, your curing and it might make it, you know, those little drops. It'll leak out oil a little bit uh, just over that first month and then it's great. Then you're golden and it's a, a superior finish that's going to last forever. So after it's dried for a bit, I buff everything in with the towel, with an orbital buffer. Uh, it works really, really well. Uh, links to all this stuff down below. And then you have a beautiful, beautiful board. And so I just, you know, these boards I think turned out great. Some really unique juice grooves, some beautiful woods, uh, some different tutorials. And so some last minute tips at the end of the video, but first I uh, wanna give a thanks to I2R for making this video possible. All right, a huge thank you to I2R, Imagination to Reality, for making this possible, uh, right? Obviously with the CNC machine, uh, but you know, sponsoring this video and making it possible for me to make these cool things with some awesome CNC machines. So really quick, I wanna talk about what I think makes them so incredible, is the fact that it is such a simple setup. I was able to get this uh, machine up and running in no time. Uh, you know, there's the onboarding call, uh, customer service is incredible, any issue. Uh, they do have training calls available for teaching you how to use the machine, uh, software, all that kind of stuff. They can do remote logins uh, if that's your need, but just some great, great features. Uh, it is a robust machine. It's fantastic. So you do have your smaller units available. Uh, these are the B series, uh, but you know, if you have a smaller space, two by two, two by three, and then you get to, uh, this is the unit that I have. So this is the B24. Um, so an incredible unit, so much possibilities, loads of other options, but a uh, huge thanks to I2R and um, get excited for some more CNC content in the future. All right, there you have it, cutting boards with a CNC. Uh, if this video provided some value for you and you wanna see something more like this, please consider subscribing to see more, uh, both CNC work and then also traditional woodworking, all kinds of goodies, primarily using these beautiful hardwoods. Uh, if you have questions, uh, use, use those comments down below. If you have some other tips of some other styles or resources uh, for where to find, you know, uh, software, designs, all that good stuff, drop it in the comments. Um, if you wanna know where any of the tools I, I found, any of the accessories, that stuff, it's all down in the description down below. But thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time.